Excellent. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today in Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting ground and home for many First Nations and Métis peoples. I have to say it is such a delight for me to be here in Edmonton and I'd like to thank the staff here at Kepler Academy for hosting us. Um, I was joking with uh, my colleagues that uh, at some point I do want to come to Edmonton uh, when it's not snowing, but I haven't yet had the, uh, the opportunity to do that. But it's really great to be back here in Alberta. And I'm also happy that I get to share the stage uh, with my federal colleague, Minister Boissonneau, as well as uh, provincial colleagues, Ministers Amory, uh, Jones and Schultz, uh, all three of whom I've had the uh, pleasure to work with uh, since we signed this agreement. So it's great to be here with everyone. And I very much look forward to continuing continuing to work with Minister Amory in supporting families and children here in Alberta. And I have to say it's also a privilege to have Randy here for this announcement. Uh, he has been a true advocate for families here in Alberta and ensuring our early learning and childcare system is a success right across the country. So when we began the process of establishing a Canada-wide early learning and child care system, Canada had a patchwork system that strained many families' budgets. It did not prioritize early childhood educators, and it left many children without care. We know there are countless parents who have lived through the frustration and uncertainty of wait lists, the struggle to find a space before being able to return to work, or moms who couldn't return to work full time because of the high cost of childcare. Millions of families, my own included, in Canada can relate to these hardships. C'est la raison pour laquelle, dans le budget 2021, le gouvernement du Canada a fait un investissement sans précédent de près de 30 milliards de dollars pour créer un système pan-canadien d'apprentissage et de garde des jeunes enfants avec les partenaires provinciaux, territoriaux et autochtones. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons conclu des ententes qui ont réduit les frais d'apprentissage et de garde des jeunes enfants partout au pays. C'est une rêve devenue réalité pour des millions de familles au Canada. And Alberta has already achieved a 50% reduction in average child care fees for licensed centers that are part of the new system and is well on its way towards achieving the goal of delivering access to regulated child care for an average of $10 a day by March 31st, 2026. That is up to hundreds of dollars in savings each month that families will have to use on essentials like groceries, gas, or clothing for their children. The Canada-wide early learning and child care system is a great example of what can be achieved when we share a commitment to improving the lives of families across the country and when governments work together. But I think it's important to remember child care is not just a social policy. It's an economic policy too. Access to high quality, affordable, flexible and inclusive child care isn't just about helping giving, give every child in Canada the best start in life, it's about growing the economy as well. Studies show that for every dollar invested in early childhood education, the broader economy receives between $1.50 and $2.80 in return. So this Canada-wide system is important but we have to implement it responsibly and transparently. And that is why we are here today. We are pleased to announce a new cost control framework and for-profit expansion plan, which will support the growth of quality childcare spaces in Alberta. Dès le début du processus de création d'un système pan-canadien d'apprentissage et de garde des jeunes enfants, Le gouvernement du Canada a clairement indiqué que l'augmentation du nombre de places réglementées et abordables était essentielle à son succès. Dans le cadre du système, le gouvernement du Canada vise à créer environ 250 000 nouvelles places en garderie dans tout le pays d'ici mars 2026, afin de donner aux familles des options de garde d'enfants abordables, peu importe où elles vivent. Alberta already has an estimated 115,000 licensed childcare spaces for children under the age of six, and the province is working towards creating 42,500 new not-for-profit childcare spaces by the end of March 2026. And the cost of creating these spaces will be supported by the Government of Canada's transformative investments. 
we are contributing $3.8 billion for childcare in Alberta over five years. Alberta's childcare system is a mixed market of both not-for-profit and for-profit providers. In recognition of this, the Canada-Alberta Canada-wide Early Learning and Child Care Agreement allows for new spaces to be created in both the not-for-profit and for-profit sectors while ensuring the reasonable use of tax dollars. The cost control framework and for-profit expansion plan we are announcing today will guarantee the sound and reasonable use of these public funds to maximize the number of Alberta families who can benefit from the Canada-wide Early Learning and Child Care System. So this framework will ensure costs and earnings of childcare businesses are reasonable and that surplus earnings are directed towards improving childcare services in the province. We want all families with children in licensed spaces to be able to reap the benefits of more affordable childcare. And with the cost control framework and for-profit expansion plan, Alberta will create a total of 68,700 childcare spaces across the province. This will provide more families in the province access to affordable childcare. The Canada-wide early learning and childcare system we are implementing is giving more families from coast to coast to coast the opportunity to pursue their own ambitions. That's why we're on this journey. And I am incredibly proud of the fantastic progress you are making here in Alberta to deliver real savings to families. I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague, Minister Boissonneau, to say a few words. Thank you. Merci. Well, bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everybody. Tansé, Tuao. Thank you, Corinna. It's always a pleasure to have you in Edmonton. And we'll get you to the Folk Fest or we'll get you to Heritage Fest. We'll get you here when the sun is shining and uh, it's very warm. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be here with Minister Avery, Minister Jones, and Minister Schultz. And I'm welcoming you all to the best federal riding in the country, which is the riding of Edmonton Center. So thank you all for being here. And I want to thank Sikander Attic and the team here at Kepler Academy for their warm welcome and uh, all of the work that they've been doing to help us get to this day. And look, early learning and child care has been quite a journey. And together, we've made amazing progress. Our governments have collaborated to transform the old patchwork quilt of child care into something that will serve the families of this province and our country for generations to come. As an Albertan, I'm excited about what this means for us to have more women and parents entering the workforce and to just say what Minister Gould said, child care is not just a social policy, it's an economic one. And as this province is scheduled to lead the country in economic growth for the next two to three years, we need all the workers we can and child care is a great enabler of getting more people into the workforce. And then when it comes to the kids, and I don't know about you all, but I think taking a break in the middle of the afternoon to make puzzles and play with Lego and actually you know, do building blocks with four and five year olds is a pretty civilized way to spend the afternoon. So thank you to Kepler for allowing us to do that because what we're doing is we're giving children the best possible start in life. And we're helping families with the means to pay their bills and deal with the rising cost of living. So the government of Canada is providing $3.8 billion over five years to help Alberta improve access to high quality, affordable, flexible, and inclusive early learning and childcare programs. Le gouvernement du Canada fournit près de 3,8 milliards de dollars sur cinq ans pour aider la province de l'Alberta à améliorer l'accès à des programmes d'apprentissage et de services de garde des jeunes enfants de haute qualité, abordable, souple et inclusif. And we want all families in licensed with children in licensed spaces, including those in the non-for-profit sector, to be able to reap the benefits of more affordable childcare. And growth and how we spend public money has to be responsible. And Minister Gould couldn't have said it better. Accountability and transparency in the spending of public money is what Albertans and Canadians expect from us. So that's why we're happy to announce this new cost control framework and for-profit expansion plan, which will support growth and increased access to quality childcare spaces in Alberta. And when you couple this with the 50% fee reduction that took effect over a year, a year ago, it means huge savings for Alberta families. Now, about, um, I would say two weeks before the last federal election, I was knocking on a door and I was talking with the, the husband and he said, I wasn't gonna vote for you, but my wife says I have to because of the childcare. I said, okay, well, let's see what happens with the election. Two weeks later, he writes me and he says, I thought it was gonna take you guys like two years to get this deal done. And it's a month in and already we're gonna see our fees reduced. That was in uh, just after the election. I saw that family 
again, at All is Bright on 124th Street in, in November, and they said it's working, it's making a great difference in our lives and the people in our community. So I want to thank our partners, the Alberta government, for their steadfast work. And I also want to thank all of the workers and all of the people in the post-secondary system who are making sure that we have high quality uh, workers and early child early learning and child care specialists so that Kepler's and nonprofit organizations that are serving kids can do what we've all asked them to do, which is help us raise the next generation of Alberta children. Thank you all very much. Merci. Hi, hi. And it's now my pleasure to turn to the Alberta Minister of Children Services, Mickey Amory. Hello, everybody. I want to take this opportunity to thank Kepler Academy and Sikander Atik. I truly enjoyed, and I think on behalf of all of my colleagues here, the wonderful tour that you provided, and I'm grateful for the time that you took today to host us. I also want to take the opportunity to acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the traditional lands of Treaty 6 First Nations. It is such a pleasure to join Federal Minister Gould, my fellow Cabinet colleagues, Minister Schultz and Minister Jones, and Minister Bonsonot, to announce an exciting update on our efforts to make licensed, high-quality childcare more affordable, accessible, and inclusive for Alberta parents. Being a father of three amazing children has given me a truly deep appreciation and understanding for the value of, high, of licensed childcare. Every parent deserves to know that their kids are safe and receiving excellent care while they attend work or school. That is why I am incredibly proud to introduce the Cost Control Framework and For-Profit Expansion Plan. This framework is a commitment made in the Alberta-Canada Early Learning and Child Care Agreement signed with the federal government just over a year ago, a Made in Alberta plan that is already lowering parent fees by an average of 50% all across the province. I want to take this opportunity to thank Minister Schultz and Minister Jones for your dedication and your leadership during this, your time as Minister for Children's Services, which helped make all of this possible. The purpose of the cost control framework and for-profit expansion plan is to make childcare even more accessible and more affordable for all families. I am confident that it will be instrumental in helping us support childcare operators so that they keep doing what they do best, supporting Albertan families. Not only will our framework make licensed childcare easier to afford, but it will also see funding supports directed to more than 22,500 additional private childcare spaces over the next three years. That's on top of the 42,500 not-for-profit not spaces that are also coming online by 2026. Now some of you are thinking, that's great, but I need affordable child care right now. I'm happy to tell you that as many as 1,600 spaces will be eligible for funding almost immediately in places where Alberta families need them most, with more than 2,000 more opening up as soon as licensing requirements are completed. With these funding supports in place, Alberta child care providers will be able to open more high quality, affordable child care programs in places that families need them most over the next three years. We believe parents should always be able to choose the type of child care that best meets their needs and that public funding for our child care sector should be as inclusive as possible. Families across Alberta rely on the quality child care offered through a mixed a public private and not-for-profit providers. Private operators who make up more than 60% of our mixed market here in this province play a valuable role in the sector and we want a system that welcomes and embraces their full participation. The framework that we've developed here in Alberta will protect parent choice by ensuring providers can offer lower fees for private and not-for-profit spaces alike. And by investing in this important program, we are helping to strengthen not only the child care sector as a whole, but also our growing province. A thriving child care system 
will reinforce Alberta's position as a destination of choice for families across our pro the country. A place where parents do not need to choose between breaking the bank and leaving, work, leaving the for workforce to care for their kids. With the equitable inclusion of all child care programs located through our province and in places Albertans need them most, this framework further supports our steadfast commitment to increasing the affordability and availability of licensed child care for all families. As part of implementing the framework that will apply to all operators, including a new sustainable funding model, Alberta's government will continue to engage with operators for their input as we work to finalize more details on the remaining 21,000 spaces. This will be a collaborative effort. We will work directly with operators. I look forward to working closely with the sector as we transition to a system that respects Alberta's mixed market and meets the needs of families. Thank you very much. I will now pass it on to Minister Schultz for her remarks. Well, thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to all of you at Kepler Ac Academy for hosting us here today. It's been a great afternoon so far, but I think it's also an exceptional example of why we needed uh, to champion really uh, our mixed market system here in, Alberta, here in Alberta when we see the innovation and creativity that's happening uh, in our private sector as well. So thank you so much. Uh, it is incredible to see the work that we started more than a year ago coming to fruition. So first of all, I do want to thank Minister Amory for the, and all of the amazing folks on your team at Children's Services, as well as Minister Jones for his work, uh, for helping to bring this over the finish line. Access to licensed high quality childcare is absolutely necessary, helping children learn, grow, and develop to their full potential, while giving parents the freedom and the choice to enter or re-enter post-secondary or the workforce especially at a time when the cost of living and affordability is top of mind for all Canadians, especially here in Alberta, but also at a time when our labour force needs people to continue to drive our economic recovery. Ensuring families have the support they need is a key priority for our government and for me personally. I echo Minister Amory in saying that as a mom to two myself, this issue is also very close to my heart. Uh, as I had the immense privilege of negotiating uh, the initial early child care uh, agreement with Minister Gould, um, which is investing $3.8 billion over five years into our province's child care system, this agreement, of, of course, includes a commitment to lower the average cost of licensed child care in Alberta, but it also has ambitious space creation goals. And right from the beginning, we knew not only with our mixed market, but also to really truly reflect and respect the choices that parents are making here in Alberta, we could not meet those targets without the innovation and creativity of our private operators, many of whom are entrepreneurs who have chosen this as a calling because of their passion for kids, and we could not uh, leave them and those families behind. So I do want uh, to thank not only the private operators across Alberta, um, but also my colleagues for pushing really hard from day one to fully include private operators under this new agreement here in Alberta because we know you're an essential part of meeting parents' needs right across our province. We also do believe that it should be parents and not government who are making the choice of what type of care is best for their children. So when we signed this deal, we knew it wasn't perfect. We knew that there was more work to be done and I can tell you, uh, personally it was hard to step away knowing that that work still uh, had to be done but I also knew it was in good hands with my amazing colleagues and I'm grateful for all of the work they've done to continue to make sure that we had this made in Alberta plan to support parents. It is a lifeline for parents who are looking to drive our economy, grow their careers and choose childcare that works for their family's needs and this today is a major step forward for private operators like I said many of whom are female entrepreneurs right across our province. Um, this is also a hopeful sign for municipalities across the province because healthy vibrant communities don't stay that way without access to child care. So I want to thank all of my colleagues and counterparts for being here today, as well as all early childhood educators and operators right across the province uh, for what you show up to do to support kids and families in Alberta every single day. Thank you so much. Could you imagine if we all started reading each other's speaking notes? <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm pleased to join my colleagues, uh, provincial and federal, 
and childcare operators to celebrate this framework that will enable the creation of additional affordable childcare spaces across the province. As a father, a former Minister of Children's Services, and as the current Minister of Affordability and Utilities, I know how much this announcement will mean to families. Access to affordable, high-quality childcare is vital, especially during this time of record inflation and rising cost of living. The creation of additional spaces will enable more parents to find affordable childcare closer to home, including in rural and remote communities where there is presently limited childcare options. This is also great news for Alberta's thriving economy, as additional childcare spaces will enable parents to pursue further education and career opportunities. With the equitable inclusion and continued growth of private operators in our unique mixed market childcare system, this framework respects that parents know best what choice of program is appropriate for their children. As a result of this agreement, families are saving between $450 and $635 per month per child enrolled in full-time licensed childcare, which is important and supports our continued efforts to keep Alberta affordable for families with young children who have been hit particularly hard by inflation. Families are buying less food, less nutritious food. They're struggling to keep their children in the, in the activities they love. To make life more affordable for families, our government is also providing $600 in affordability payments per child to low and middle income families from January to June. In fact, the first batch of monthly affordability payments are rolling out to nearly 900,000 Albertans and families today. In addition to affordability payments, our Affordability Action Plan is also providing broad-based relief to families this winter and beyond. This includes $500 in electricity rebates, hundreds of dollars in fuel tax relief, natural gas and electricity price protection, and personal income tax changes that will keep more money in the pockets of families. We will continue to work to keep Alberta affordable, including in childcare, so that Albertans and families can focus on what really matters. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce Cindy Nerling, President of the Alberta Association of Childcare Operators, to speak. Thank you, Minister Jones. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's great to be here to mark an important step for families looking for affordable childcare options. I have the privilege of representing many childcare operators in our province who are part of the Alberta Association of Childcare Operators. I'm glad for the opportunity to mark this milestone of the cost control framework and the private sector expansion plan with some of my colleagues who are here for this announcement today. Private child care operators provide the majority of child care in Alberta and we take pride in the quality of our work and the positive impact it has on Alberta families. The high quality child care we provide gives ch children a meaningful early childhood education that will set them up for future success and parents lean on us so they can focus on their jobs, businesses, or their studies. Including private child care operators in the child care agreement is vital to reducing child care fees in Alberta and for our parents. This announcement is great news for us and our Alberta families, especially during this time of high inflation when many parents are feeling the strain. Some of my parents have expressed how much of a difference having child care fees cut in half is going to make for their families. It is going to put money back in parents' pockets, and it's going to give children the opportunities to pursue the activities that they love. I'm glad the province agrees and is willing to work with us to make sure parents have affordable quality child care options in their communities. We look forward to working with the Children's Services Ministry to expand, high, to expand access to high quality and affordable child care for Alberta families. Thank you very much. Cindy. That brings us to the end of the formal portion of this announcement. We're going to move now to question and answers. We'll start on the floor before moving to the phone lines. You're invited to ask one question and one follow-up. Good afternoon. It's Safe Kaiser, Global News. Uh, Minister Amory, a uh, question for you there is you said uh, 1,600 uh, private spaces will be available in Alberta relatively immediately here and uh, based on need. I'm just wondering how do you determine which families need that support? Well, right now, the 1,600 spaces that I mentioned earlier have been uh, reviewed for eligibility and are ready to begin operations. They're nearing ready. And so those 1,600 op uh, spaces are from operators who are ready to go, and that's why we're going to begin with those. We do have other applications that are currently being reviewed, but they will come shortly. A uh, question for Minister Jones. Uh, Minister, we've heard over and over from Albertans 
insurance rates are a little too high here, not affordable at all. Now, after quite a lot of delay, your government decided to freeze insurance rates for the rest of the year, which doesn't really address the fact that people feel like they are paying too much for insurance right now. We've taken steps to reduce premium growth in insurance. The last changes we made through Bill 41 reduced premium growth by between $120 dollars and $140 uh, person per vehicle. We continue to evaluate options with industry and Albertans on how we can further uh, reduce premiums or slow that growth. Uh, but we've taken action. We've, we've directed that there will be no further rate increases approved uh, for effectively the, the next year. And that will provide relief for Alberta motorists. And it's just one of the many ways that we're keeping Alberta affordable. Thank you. Hello, Naren of CTV. This is my question was, and anyone can answer this one, was the for-profit originally in this plan? Was this a concession between the Alberta government and the federal government to get this deal in place? Can you talk a little bit more about the for-profit? Yeah. Um, I'm happy to, and Minister Gold may want to follow up with additional information, but when we negotiated this deal, uh, we admitted it, it wasn't a perfect deal. There were still some things that we needed to push for, specifically here in Alberta, that we had well over 60% of our child care spaces were in private settings. There was absolutely no correlation between whether or not a centre was private or non-profit, uh, and whether their costs were high or low, or whether they were high quality. Uh, we knew that private operators had to be part of this agreement but we also had to make sure that the dollars that are being invested taxpayer dollars were directly going to support kids and families we did not want to hold up support for Alberta parents at a time when we needed them to take part in Alberta's economic recovery so we rolled out our agreement knowing that this piece that we are talking about today still had to be negotiated but we really wanted to move fast uh, to roll out those dollars to parents at a time when we had been coming out of a difficult couple of years, an economic downturn, and parents wanted uh, to re-enter the workforce. So we didn't want to slow that work down. And that was really, um, I think, you know, one of the outlying pieces. I know the private operators across Alberta uh, also advocated very strongly. We knew that this mattered. Um, they made their voices loud and clear. And I'm happy to see that this announcement today recognizes the contribution that they play um, and the important role that they play, in fact, in actually hitting those targets for space creation growth, which I think both the private and nonprofit sectors alike would say is not doable without the creativity and innovation of the private sector. Well, I'll just say that I was appointed minister, uh, and the first call I made was to Minister Schultz um, on uh, negotiating the Alberta agreement. But I think there's one thing that's important to clarify is that right across the country, um, any existing licensed uh, provider or space, either for-profit, not-for-profit, private, public, was grandfathered into the agreement. So today's announcement isn't about existing licensed spaces. It's really about expansion um, of new spaces to meet those uh, space expansion numbers because we recognize both as a federal government but also with our provincial and territorial counterparts that uh, reducing fees on its own isn't isn't enough to create a system. We have to build more spaces because, um, you know, as we hear right across the country, but of course here in Edmonton and Alberta, um, it's no exception. Parents who are on wait lists to get into spaces and so the Alberta government has agreed and is committed to and is rolling out expansion of 65,000 additional spaces and today's announcement is about those 22,500 spaces that are in the for-profit sector and as Minister Schultz um, you know very correctly um, pointed out and explained we came to the agreement recognizing that we still had work to do on expansion um, in the for-profit sector because we do want to ensure just as much at the federal level as at the provincial level that those tax dollars are going into um, child care, right? That they're going into making sure that we have high quality, accessible, inclusive, affordable child care that's benefiting children and their families. And um, I, I, as I mentioned, had the pleasure to work with all three of these wonderful people um, up here on uh, this agreement, uh, concluding the negotiation with uh, Minister Amory. But uh, it was a lot of hard work and a lot of effort uh, from folks in the province and at the federal level to get us to where we are today. And I think we're in a really good space um, to make sure that that expansion happens here in Alberta. Thank you. So when you talk about for-profit, I know maybe some families would be like, if people can afford for-profit private daycare, they may not necessarily need the $10 a day, whereas struggling families would need that. So does this take away from those spaces for the chance? How about even like 
uh, daycare providers, like, are, is there enough providers to accommodate this? So can you kind of talk about like the cost? Yeah, price? so so the $3.8 billion that has been transferred to, or that partially has been transferred and will be transferred over five years to the government of Alberta is to meet the objectives that we've mutually agreed to. So for example, that all uh, licensed care spaces that existed, uh, those 115,000 spaces that existed at the time of signing, uh, would see an average reduction of 50% uh, as of last January. And so those fees have all been reduced already. So whether you are a for-profit or a not-for-profit, if you're licensed and you've signed on to the system, those fees have been reduced. And the objective is to get to an average of $10 a day by uh, March of 2026. Alberta is on track to do that. Um, there, there may be uh, private operators. I don't. I'm not as familiar with uh, the situation in Alberta, but uh, that decide, or not-for-profit operators that decide not to sign on to the system and therefore don't offer those fee reductions uh, to families. But uh, my understanding is the vast, vast, vast majority of operators in Alberta have signed on. And so families are seeing those fee reductions and then recognizing that there's still a need to grow the number of spaces that are available because um, we just, we don't have enough spaces, not just in Alberta, but across the country uh, to meet the demand. Uh, we have committed as a federal government to supporting the expansion of 250,000 additional spaces across the country over those five years. 65,000 of those are here in Alberta. Alberta, and the transfers from the federal government will help uh, cover the costs both of expansion but also a few reductions moving forward. We'll take one more question from the room before moving online. Do we have any question? Okay. Question in French, s'il vous plaît, pour Madame Gould. Alors, le plan est prévu pour 2026. Uh, Est-ce que le plan sera reconduit après ce, cette date? Oui, j'espère que oui, ça c'est l'objectif. Alors, uh, ce uh, plan initial, uh, cette entente initiale, uh, c'est pour cinq ans. Et c'est important que c'est pour cinq ans, parce que c'est la première fois que nous sommes en train de faire ça au Canada. C'est une nouvelle uh, entente entre le gouvernement fédéral et le gouvernement provincial et territorial. Um, mais uh, l'objectif, c'est bien sûr d'avoir une nouvelle entente après cinq ans. Et uh, ce que je peux assurer à tout le monde, c'est que nous sommes en train maintenant de uh, débattre uh, le uh, projet de loi C-35 uh, dans le Parlement, dans la Chambre de communes, qui va garantir et um, garantir le rôle fédéral euh, dans euh, les garderies et la petite enfance euh, dans l'avenir. Alors, euh, dans le budget euh, 2021, le gouvernement fédéral a mis en place à 30 milliards de dollars sur cinq ans pour les garderies et petite enfance, avec plus de 9 milliards de, de dollars chaque année en avance. Alors, le euh, L'objectif et, et le rôle fédéral est là et euh, nous avons maintenant les ententes avec chaque province et territoire euh, dans le pays et euh, nous sommes maintenant dans la deuxième année de ces ententes euh, et jusqu'à maintenant, euh, ça, ça va bien et euh, nous sommes contents de voir la voie d'où nous sommes et nous allons continuer dans cette, euh, dans cette voie. La deuxième question est de deux volets, mais qui aboutissent euh, au même point. Mm -hmm. Dans un contexte d'inflation, donc mm -hmm. les coûts d'exploitation de, de ces garderies vont peut-être exploser d'ici euh, quelques années. Et puis, il y a aussi le contexte euh, d'immigration qui euh, s'accroît. Donc, il va y avoir beaucoup plus de nombre d'enfants à, à recevoir dans ces garderies. Mm -hmm. Est-ce que vous ne redoutez pas euh, une explosion des coûts d'exploitation de ces garderies qui vont peut-être peser sur le budget fédéral euh, bon, euh, on verra euh, sûrement euh, l'inflation est quelque chose qui est sur, euh, sur le euh, que tout le monde est dans la tête de tout le monde à, à ce moment, bien sûr, soit ici au Canada ou soit dans le monde, les coûts de, de vie sont augmentés. Euh, nous voyons bien que euh, ça coûte plus cher, soit comme parents de famille, soit comme euh, garderie, euh, mais c'est quelque chose dont nous devions travailler, bien sûr, ensemble. Nous sommes dans la première année de cette entente. Alors, euh, il y a bien sûr des opportunités d'évaluation, de voir comme ça va, mais que je peux assurer à chaque famille canadienne, à chaque personne ici, à chaque euh, 
euh, organisation de, de garderie, c'est que le gouvernement fédéral est là à long terme. Euh, mais je sais que ça ne va, qu'on qu va confronter des obstacles. C'est normal quand nous faisons quelque chose de nouveau. Euh, mais je sais qu'il y a une volonté extrêmement euh, dédiée du part des gouvernements provinciaux, territoriaux, du gouvernement fédéral et bien sûr des, euh, des hommes, des femmes qui, qui donnent ces services de garde là aussi. Okay, we're moving to the phone lines now. Um, Operator, could you please put in the first caller? Thank you. Dave McGinn, Globe and Mail. Hi. Uh, two questions for Minister Gould. Um, the first is, what does the framework say about limits on profits for private operators? Well, I might turn that to Minister Amory, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We wanted to make it abundantly clear that uh, we are committed to sound and reasonable use of public funds and to ensuring that costs and earnings of childcare businesses, both in the not-for-profit and the private uh, operators, are reasonable and that surpluses that are earned above reasonable earnings are dedicated towards improving childcare spaces. And so the agreement really says that the uh, profits and, and uh, earnings are directed towards child care expansion and improvement and not to be used for personal growth or other areas. Okay. And then my second question was the expansion targets for both uh, private and nonprofit spaces. How were those numbers arrived at? Like why? I, I suppose I'm asking why is there, you know, why do, why is there yeah. seem to be, why is there uh, a greater priority on nonprofit as opposed to so the, private sector? Yeah, of course. And hi, Dave. Nice to talk to you. Um, nice so, to talk to you too. <laughs> um, so the, the objective of the Canada-wide um, framework that we've negotiated with all provinces and territories puts an emphasis on the growth of the not-for-profit sector um, and prioritizes growth in the not-for-profit sector. The agreement with Alberta is um, different um, than most of the other agreements that we have across uh, the country, um, the exception being um, Ontario, where there is also um, additional growth in the for-profit sector, but Ontario already had a 70% uh, not-for-profit ratio to for-profits. Um, recognizing um, the work that had been done in that province over a period of time. And they also, as you know, have uh, a cost control framework in place when it comes to for-profit expansion. Um, when we decided uh, on these numbers, we recognized that we wanted to maintain that spirit um, of prioritizing the growth of the not-for-profit sector, but recognized that Alberta did have a more unique mixed market system than other provinces and territories in Canada. And so we came to the agreement that there would be room for growth within the for-profit sector, but to try and make um, the not-for-profit and for-profit sectors more equal um, over time. Um, and that's why we spent the past year working out what this framework would look like so that we could get to um, a place that I think will work uh, well for families and operators in Alberta. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. This is just to follow up on what Dave was asking um, about the cost control framework. Um, and my understanding is that uh, a proportion of the surplus earnings the, the deal would consider beyond reasonable earnings and therefore need to be directed towards specifically improving services. Can you tell me what proportion of surplus earnings this deal considers beyond reasonable earnings as like what kind of percentage are we talking about here? Um, so it's more based on what the costs of the operations are. Um, and there's a formula that I'm sure the province can follow up with you on more specifically afterwards to kind of describe what that formula looks like. But it, and it takes into account what the actual costs of operation are and then has a formula for what those kind of reasonable profits would 
look like and any additional would go back into creating additional spaces, providing better services, wages, et cetera. Because what um, I think all of us, uh, both levels of government want here is to make sure that, you know, when we're spending public dollars on public services, that this is going towards a public good um, and recognizing that we don't want, um, you know, public dollars to become an investment vehicle for private investors. So this is something that is really important. And um, But I think the province can probably follow up with you on more details as to what that looks like exactly. Operator, could you put through the next caller, please? Oh, can I, have, can I ask a follow-up question? Oh, sure, Lisa. <laughs> I had silence. Sorry to say. I, I'm just wondering, for Minister Amory, uh, you mentioned that that surplus cash is not to be used for personal growth and other areas. Could you offer some specific examples of what what is included and what is excluded, uh, just, just to build off of what Minister Gold was just saying, in terms of how you define improving services? Well, certainly. Uh, the goal of the agreement is to uh, place an emphasis on child care improvement, child care expansion, uh, money redirected back into child care programs. What it wasn't intended to do, as Minister Gold mentioned, was to allow for a private vehicle for personal other uh, endeavors or uh, investment in areas that are unrelated to child care. And so really operators are encouraged, uh, private operators are encouraged to utilize those, um, those excess funds to reinvest back into their daycare programs. Operator, can you put through the next caller, please? Thank you, Jordan Canigan, CTV. Hi there, thank you for taking my question. This is for the uh, Provincial Children Services Minister, and I appreciate that this announcement is about licensed daycares, but I have questions about unlicensed day homes. Uh, Minister, last year the City of Calgary approved changes to its application process for unlicensed day homes to make first aid certification and criminal record checks mandatory. Is the province considering Alberta-wide regulations that are similar to those for unlicensed day homes? I have been in close contact with uh, the City of Calgary and uh, with Mayor Gondacht, and I am working together closely with her uh, department and officials to monitor the progress of that initial pilot program. We are contemplating, we're looking at how it works out. Um, we certainly have our, our own um, <clears throat> criteria and monitoring of unlicensed daycare facilities as well, and we'll continue to ensure that the uh, safety of children are paramount, regardless of where parents choose their child care. Do you have a follow-up, Dave? I do, thank you. And provincial data shows that dozens of stop orders have been issued to unlicensed day homes since the Child Care Act was enacted in February of 2021. Uh, some of the reasons for those closures include due to imminent threats. Uh, what does the frequency of those stop orders in the last couple of years say to you about current regulations in the sector? Well, it certainly, uh, it certainly uh, reinforces the effectiveness of the uh, department's uh, ability to respond quickly when they hear about any concerns when it comes to unlicensed daycare facilities. But I also want to emphasize that the Alberta way has always been to encourage parental choice. And if parents choose that they want to uh, utilize unlicensed daycare facilities, day homes, other types of uh, child care, we're certainly going to encourage that. We're going to keep continuing to monitor to ensure the safety of children province-wide, irrespective of where parents choose to, to send their children for care. Operator, can you put through the last caller, please? Thank you, Francois Jolie, Radio Canada. Go ahead. Francois, are you muted? Um, can you ask your question? I was, sorry. Hi. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, uh, so, so just one question for uh, Mr. Gold. Um, Euh, Madame Gould, je voulais juste vous entendre sur la question du privé versus le public. Pourquoi euh, permettre à l'Alberta une aussi grande proportion de, de garderies privées alors que ce n'était pas dans votre philosophie au départ, notamment avec les autres provinces? 
Mm -hmm, bien sûr. Alors, comme j'ai mentionné, euh, pour le gouvernement fédéral, euh, la priorité était sur l'expansion la, euh, des euh, garderies sans but lucratif, et ça, c'était l'objectif. Euh, et ça, c'est toujours l'objectif euh, en Alberta aussi. La plupart des euh, expansions est dans le secteur de euh, non but lucratif. Euh, mais euh, nous avons reconnu que pour euh, l'Alberta, comme ils ont euh, plus de 60 de leurs espaces, qui sont uh, déjà dans le secteur uh, privé, uh, d'avoir une, uh, une expansion de ce secteur sera possible uh, tout uh, quand nous aurions une, uh, uh, une manière de contrôler les profits uh, les, uh, de, de, de ce secteur et assurer que ça va uh, justement au uh, service de garde, aux petites enfances, aux familles. Uh, alors, nous avons pris uh, la dernière année justement pour négocier uh, cette entente avec l'Alberta qui va permettre à l'Alberta de, de croître leur système uh, de 65 000 espaces, 22, 22 500 en le secteur privé, mais tout avec une, euh, une maîtrise de contrôler euh, les profits et d'assurer que ces euh, dollars euh, publics, ces dollars euh, des citoyens euh, d'Alberta et de Canada euh, vont justement assurer euh, un service public. Do you have a follow-up? And a follow-up. Yeah, follow-up for uh, Mr. Uh, Amory. Um, just wanted to clarify on the question of earnings. So uh, are there other other things in this framework? Uh, so, so I understand that portion of, of earnings and profit have to be re reinvested, but are there other things uh, operators are allowed or not, or, or more precisely not allowed to do in terms of things they're not allowed to spend money on or, or kind of conditions they have to offer workers, that sort of thing? Like is... In, In terms of new regulation or new things that they have to do, is the, 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 this rule around earning the only new thing, or, there, or is there more? No, there, there will certainly be uh, additional parameters for those operators looking to enter into the funded agreement, the bilateral agreement. And some of those include a, an alignment with ranges that have been established in the initial agreement. Uh, in regards to the fees that they may charge to parents. We are taking every step possible to making sure that the, um, the cost to parents remains affordable as much as possible. And so there will be some restrictions and parameters that are going to be set forth. Those are going to align with the same parameters that we've had imposed initially in the first, uh, in the first signing of the agreement. And um, that will uh, require the operators who wish to enter into this funded agreement to, uh, to align with as well. All right, that brings us to the end of the news conference. Thank you, everyone.